Good morning, Source family. Welcome to my home. Welcome to my office. Uh, this is Command Center Conaby uh, tune, <laughs> you're tuning into. Um, I hope that you're having a blessed morning. I know this is, uh, this is surreal. Uh, it's been surreal for the last couple of weeks. It's definitely surreal for me uh, to be preaching to a camera in my house for Sunday morning. Uh, but I am so glad that um, I am in a community with people who no matter what are seeking to worship and be together, to hear the word of God and to explore it together. And so um, as we enter in this time of worship this morning and as we enter this time of reading God's word and exploring it, um, my prayer is that the Holy Spirit would move powerfully in you and uh, in here as well in this house, uh, that we might continue to explore what it means to be the people of God in this time. Uh, our uh, scripture today is from Isaiah uh, chapter 11, verses uh, 1 through 8. And so if you'd like to turn there and read with me, uh, that's great. I'm also just going to read it for you now. It says this, A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of power, the spirit of knowledge and of fear of the Lord, and he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears, but with righteousness he will judge the needy. With justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. With the breath of his lips he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt and faithfulness the sash around his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb, the leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the yearling will together. And a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear, their young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the hole of the cobra, and the young child put his hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Uh, as we um, enter in this time where we explore the scripture, as I was reading our passage today, um, the first verse, it says, it says this, it says, a shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse, from his roots a branch will bear fruit. And so um, the first thing I thought of, <laughs> weirdly enough, when I read this passage was about a bonsai tree I bought my first year in college. Uh, if you don't know what a bonsai tree is, it's it's not actually a tree, it's, a, it's kind of an art style uh, with all different kinds of trees. But what you do is you grow from a sapling, a very small tree. You prune and grow a, a small tree into a shape. You form it over years and years and years, trimming it, pruning it, taking care of it, and making it into a beautiful work of art, both nature and art kind of combined. It's, it's really cool. If you have a moment, open a new tab, grab your cell phones, Google it real quick. You'll see all these pictures of these beautiful little trees that people take care of over years. So randomly, uh, I was coming home from visiting a friend of mine at College Station, and um, I see this van selling these bonsai trees. And I don't know why, but I just decided then and there, I said, you know what? This is a new part of my life. I'm an adult now. I'm going to take care of this tree. I'm going to nurture it. I'm going to take it. This is a symbol of my independence in the world <laughs> and my responsibility. So I buy this van bonsai tree on the side of the road. I take it home. And, you know, maybe the first couple days I water it, I take care of it. I do no research. I don't look up anything on how you're supposed to take care of these things. I don't know anything about taking care of plants at all. But somehow I said, I'm just, I apparently just decided to wing it with this bonsai tree that takes a lot of special <laughs> attention and knowledge to do. Um, as you can imagine, very quickly, uh, this thing just completely fried on my windowsill. Uh, it was dead, uh, and, it, and it stayed on my windowsill for years as, like, the symbol of my failure. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't throw it away. Maybe laziness. Maybe I just wanted to remind myself of how I did not take responsibility for something when I said I would. Uh, I don't know, but it sat on my windowsill forever, uh, and just reminding me of my complete neglect of this poor little tree that I bought on the side of the road. Um 
And it's so funny, uh, and it's a funny story, but the reason I thought of that is, is as the bonsai tree was this just dead thing on my windowsill. Our scripture today is talking about a stump, this thing that's been cut down, right? It, it, in, uh, in all probably understanding of looking at a stump, we all would probably assume that it's dead. Um, but how many of us have seen the stump maybe with a new branch growing out of it? That the roots of the, the stump were so deep that even in completely losing most of its body above the ground, this, this, this plant is able to continue and, and, and start life again. And Isaiah is using this imagery for a reason. The people of God, um, Israel, has walked away. They have not done the will of God. They've, they've not followed his commandments. They've neglected the poor. They've oppressed people. They've given themselves over to selfish ambition and wealth. And so God is saying, listen, this is a word of judgment, first off, that Isaiah is bringing, that you guys have not followed God. And because of that, there's some stuff that's going to happen. You haven't walked in his ways. You haven't walked in the way in which he calls you to live faithfully in this world. And because of that, like the results of your selfishness are going to come back at you. Um, and in one hand, this is a word of judgment. And in the other hand, we just read the word of hope. Because Isaiah wasn't just saying, listen, because you guys haven't followed God and you're going to reap what you sow. He's also saying out of that, God is going to continue to be faithful. And this has been the journey of scripture throughout humanity and history, that God has always been a God who continues to walk with his people, who continues to walk with the world, slowly bringing him, them back to what he originally created us to be. From the very beginning, when God created humanity, when God created this planet and we stepped away and, and sin and, and selfishness corrupted it and started killing this thing that, that God had created and destroying it, Instead of destroying it, instead of letting it be a dead plant on his windowsill just to look at and remind him of his failure, God said, no, I'm going to prune this thing down. I'm going to trim it down and we're going to regrow it. We're going to rebuild it back to what it was supposed to be. And that has been the, the, the entire history of God and his people, right? Before Jesus and after Jesus, Isaiah is actually specifically talking about Jesus in this moment, the Jesus that's going to come and bring like reconciliation for the poor and the needy and he's going to not do what is good in the eyes and the ears of of people of this world but what is right in God's eyes the love and the compassion that he has and the love that he calls his creation to be in harmony with where the lion and the lamb lay down together Jesus was that for us we believe deeply that he he brought himself not only to be a sacrifice right through his death and resurrection that we might have a relationship with God but also an example of what it means to live faithfully, to, to let the things of this world be put aside, um, to not care about selfish gain or uh, politics or being the most popular in the room or the wealthiest or whatever it is, to look beyond all that. He came as an example of that. In the midst of crises like this, um, we hold on to this hope. We hold on that God has never decided to let the thing die on his windowsill. And in fact, he began new growth. He began new growth and he's continuing to nurture it. The church today, since Jesus has grown over the years, and yes, there's been some pruning. The Christian history is not perfect and we or people are not perfect, but we rest in knowing that in our imperfections, God is still faithful. God is still walking with us. And so in the midst of this time, I just want us to remind ourselves what, who it is the God we serve. We serve a God who brings life. Life in the midst of death, sometimes facing death, facing destruction is hard. It's hard to look at this world, this brokenness in this world, the things in this world that cause pain and suffering. We know that's not from God. We know it's not from God. But we also know that out of those terrible things, that God is continually bringing new life and redeeming it and bringing it closer to who he wants us to be and what he wants this world to be. He's not only in the business of redeeming our hearts, but the world, the created world around us, nature itself. And so as we enter in the season, it's important that we know the God we serve, a God of life and abundance of compassion, the God that promises to clothe us when we need clothes and to feed us when we are hungry, the God that promises to bring us peace in the midst of suffering, the God that walks with us through the deepest valleys that we might experience. 
The second word I have and the thing that I want to kind of acknowledge is that it's okay not to be normal right now. In the passage Isaiah that we just read right here, um, the people of God, Isaiah is speaking before and after, right? At, before the um, the exile of, of the people of God. So they're going to be conquered by the Babylonians and other people, and they're going to be exiled from their land. And so he's he's delivering this word of judgment and hope before, and his words of judgment and hope are also delivered after when they return. The people of God, as they were exiled, needed something to hold on to. They needed a hope. They needed to remind themselves who they were and who they were meant to be. And so when we're in the midst of not being normal, that's okay. When we're in the midst of wrestling through fear and anxiety and stress and pain and suffering, that's okay. God doesn't call us to not feel these things. He knows it's a part of this world and he wants to speak his life into it. But that doesn't mean ignoring it. It doesn't mean pretending like it doesn't exist. It means acknowledging it. It means thinking about it. It means living into it. It means being faithful in the midst of it. And so if you needed the word today that it's okay not to be okay, you have it. God knows our pain. He's with us in our pain. He doesn't call us to ignore it, but he wants to be with us in it. The people of God continually went back and forth in this relationship. And the church, even after Jesus has gone back and forth, we have made mistakes, we have come back, we've returned to him. And in the midst of the seasons in which we had, we faced the brokenness of the world, like war and plague and sickness and death, God is still walking. He's still bringing new life. He's still pruning. And so as we hold on to the hope, as we acknowledge where we are, we have a call forward. There's a call forward into this. Um, unfortunately, in Isaiah, after the people return, they don't return back to God. They continue to doubt. They continue not to follow his will. And the the stump has been cut. And it's a painful story. And, and it's okay for it to be painful. It's okay for us to, to know that because it calls us to be faithful now. Um, there are seasons where we don't get things right. There are seasons where we um, miss the mark. And that's okay. Um, that's okay. It doesn't stop God's will from being done. It doesn't hinder his, his new life that he's bringing to this world. But it does affect how we live in this time, in our part of history be between God and humanity. There have been generations that have come before us that have gotten it. There have been generations that have missed the mark. The call of the church is always to ask the question, are we being faithful now? Are we being faithful as the ones that have been faithful before? How do we learn the lessons from the ones that have not in the past? And how do we set up the future for the best success, the best example that we can give to them to build off of, that they might not make the same mistakes, that they might say, look at them even in the midst of this, they lived faithfully. We live and we serve a God of life. We're in the midst of a time where it's hard, where there is suffering, where there is fear. But our call of the church is to remain faithful. It's in times like these, it's in crises like these that the walls are down. Anytime in the midst of crisis, right? Our walls come down where we are forced to just acknowledge the reality that exists. When a death of a loved one happens, when, when we enter, we lose a job, we have struggles with people we care about. When, when these things happen to our lives, the walls come down and the realest, chorus part of us is exposed. Our job as Christians is to live that faithfully, to acknowledge that our walls are down and to ask the question, what does it mean to receive life even in the midst of this? What does it mean to surround myself with people who want to care and nurture not only myself, but each other where I can invest and care for them? What does it mean to look for the places of hope and of peace and of joy, even in the midst of the hardest times where death surrounds us? What does it mean to look for the hope and not focus on the despair? Because it's not just for our own sake, 
that we do this. It's not only for our own health and our own way of helping us process this pain and this and this suffering, but it's also a witness to those around us. Our world is filled with doom and gloom. It's filled with anarchy and an apocalyptic imagery and because it brings fear and power and it brings wealth. People make money scaring people. What sells is not the good stories, it's the bad ones. And so when people look out in this world and they see the bad, it, it, it has a way of capturing us and controlling us. We're called to people to live outside that, to look to the only person who brings hope in the midst of that, to look to the God that we know is one day going to fully restore this world to what it was meant to be, where these things that we see, the things that we witness, will no longer take place. That life will be abundant. That death will have lost its sting. We're called to be a people who acknowledge death because we have to acknowledge death before we receive the resurrection that is there. Jesus died just last Easter, right? And was raised from the dead. We have to acknowledge the death in order to see the life. And so my encouragement to you is no, no matter where you're at, no matter what you're going through, to look for the places of life that surround you. I was, you know, in the midst of this, um, we've been using a lot of video to communicate, not only with friends, but also family. And I realized the other day that I had talked to my brother and my sister and their families and their kids and my mom and my dad more in the last few weeks than I ever have in the last few years. And not only that, I had seen their faces more. We live all over the country. And so I've, I've actually interacted more with my family in this season than I did before. And there, there are other things around us, you know, and this time when I look around, I, I know now there's this, we have the evidence right here. The biggest argument that, that care for your neighbor deeply affects this world. What you do affects me and what I do affects you. That's the gospel. That's Jesus. That's the message of hope that if we care for our neighbor, it can make change in this world. That us staying home and staying safe is not only taking care of our family, but the people around us and some of the most vulnerable people around us. That's what I see. Dolphins are returning to Venice. The water is clearing. Nature is having is also being affected by this. There, there are signs that are happening. They're, they're in our own personal lives. They're out in the world. There are signs where that are pointing us to the life that God is leading us to in this season. As we come out of this pandemic, as we come out of this time, there, there can be two things that happen. We can come out as a family that is, that is exploring and following the crumbs of life that God is teaching us and showing us, learning new lessons about what it means to not only love God and love our neighbor, but to be loved by the unlimited grace of God. And there's also going to be people who walk out of this full of despair and hope, hopelessness and depression. And it's okay to feel those things. But we want, as a body, we want to explore what does it mean to hold on to the peace and hope of God that has is there even in the midst of death. And so as you go into this week, as you go into your daily life, whether it be because you're an essential worker or you're staying at home, wherever it is you may be, look for the signs of life because we serve a living God, not only a living God, but a God that brings life, a cosmic God that brings life, a God who spoke all that we see into existence, who chose not to let this thing die on a windowsill, but to restore it, to nurture it, to grow, to bring it back to him. And no matter how we might be feeling or where we might be, that truth remains. We hold on to it. We seek it. We explore it so that we might taste just a piece of that heaven here on earth. We are the kingdom of God, the intersection of heaven and this world where God and his spirit is actively moving, the actively moving. The Holy Spirit is actively moving in our lives right now. And a piece of heaven is here with us. If we tune our eyes, if we put that lens on and we seek it, it's going to lead us forward. Look to his word. Look and explore this with your people, 
your small groups, your Sunday schools, your family, at the dinner table. Take the opportunity that you have to just sit and reflect. We're in a season where we don't, a lot of us are just kind of stuck. We're stuck at our house. Let's use this time to reflect, to remember, and to look for the seeds of life that God is planting in this world. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for the ways in which you bring us to new life. God, in a season where we are just off our normal, Lord, a season where we might be struggling with fear, anxiety, and pain, God, we pray that you would meet us there. Lord, that as we look into the depths of our hardship, as we open our minds, Lord, to what it is that we are feeling and what we're going through, Lord, we pray that your spirit and your word would give us words of hope and life. God, that as we open ourselves to you and your spirit and your word, that you might instill in us new life, peace, and joy, that we might see in the world just pieces of what you're doing to bring creation back to you. God, as our eyes are opened, as we see the world in new ways as you would have us see it, Lord, will we be bold enough to share that with others? Will we be bold enough, Lord, to share it with our family, our friends, our loved ones, and our neighbor? God, help us in a season where we have to be socially distant, Lord, to not be socially isolated, to find ways to care for others in the midst of all of this. God, we rest in your life, and your abundance. God, lead us closer to who you call us to be. Lord, we live for you, and we know that you, Lord, love and care for us. Lord, we give you this time. We give you our lives. In your precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Source family, as you go from here, as you Go from your computer screen back just to your life. Would you receive this blessing? Would the God of the universe, the God who created everything, richly speak blessing and compassion and grace into your hearts and your minds? That as you go from this place, as you go from this time, that he might be with you, opening your eyes to the deep love he has for you and the calls he has for you to care for those around you. Go in the peace and the love of God. Amen.